Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about growth factors. What are they? Why do we use them? What kind of side effects should you expect if you're given growth factors and other things that might come up? So, growth factors are used for people whose bone marrow is likely to be suppressed, and I'll explain that in just a minute, by chemotherapy. What does suppressed mean? Well, our immune system is very complicated. You've probably heard me say before that it's like a big maple tree. And when we get chemotherapy, certain parts of the bone marrow are uh, less active. They're um, stressed by the chemo a little bit. Chemotherapy affects rapidly dividing cells like cancer cells, but also the bone marrow. Our bone marrow is deep inside our bones. It's really uh, predominantly in the spine, in the pelvis, in the long bones like the femur, in the breastbone, even in the ribs. But it, and its job is to make cells. It makes all types of white cells, it makes platelets, it makes red cells and it's constantly making cells. So even when we're little babies and even as we get older, our bone marrow continues to turn out cells. Our, our red blood cells, for example, have to be remade every seven days. And our white blood cells also have to be made really commonly. So think about this, chemotherapy affects rapidly dividing cells, not just cancer, which we want it to do, but also the good cells. And because when we're exposed to chemotherapy, we want to be able to fight infections. We like to preserve the part of the bone marrow and the cells that are made by those, uh, those cells that affect bacteria, which are predominantly the ones we're at risk for. I'll just explain a little bit more. We think about fungus, we think about viruses like the common cold. We're actually not at greater risk on chemotherapy of being affected, depending on the chemo and how long the bone marrow is suppressed or squished down by chemotherapy. The cells, the, the bacterial infections are the ones we're at greater risk for. There's a certain type of white blood cell called a neutrophil that is affected by chemotherapy that's responsible for fighting bacteria. So to recap, the bone marrow turns over rapidly. It makes lots and lots of parts of the immune system. The neutrophils, that branch of the immune system, uh, is most commonly affected by chemotherapy and the neutrophils fight bacteria. So if we think about the immune system like a maple tree, this is just one branch. I always say it's a branch about the size where you might hang a bird feeder. Maybe not a branch where you would hang a swing or something heavier. So it's obviously important, it does a lot of work, but it's not the entire immune system. Again, depending on the type of chemotherapy people are on. But the chemotherapy for breast cancer affects a branch about the size of one you'd hang a bird feeder on. Growth factors are, they were previously made in mice and now they're made in a lab and they're humanized so our body doesn't reject them. We, get, we give those to people, it goes under the skin, it can go in the abdomen, that's the most common place because we've got a wider expanse of skin than other parts of the body. It can be given in other parts but you'll see it most commonly given in the skin of the abdomen goes through a tiny needle under the skin, and then we gently inject the growth factor, which I'll give you a couple names we might use for that as well. Another way it can be given is with something called an on-body auto-injector. These are pretty nifty. There's a little device put on the arm, and it has a covering on it. It's not heavy plastic or anything. 24 hours after you leave, it automatically dispenses the growth factor shot into your arm. And this is very convenient because you don't have to give it to yourself, a family member doesn't have to give it to you, and the timing is just perfect. Okay, so I've covered why we give them, the purpose of them, how it's given. I'm going to talk for what you can expect if you're getting growth factors. So many people who get growth factors have no side effects at all. Remember, we're just boosting a part of the immune system that your chemotherapy suppressed. However, we can't always tell exactly how much growth factor a person needs. Everybody gets the same dose to start, the doses we know in clinical trials and in years of clinical experience. What if your bone marrow didn't need as much of a boost 
as we just gave you. Well, picture a whole bunch of people inside, let's say a cafe on a Sunday morning, and we're adding more people and more people because we just have opened the doors. And it gets pretty squishy in there, right? And it starts to become really crowded. And you might imagine your toes might get, get stepped on, or you might even imagine some art on the wall might get damaged. Well, that's what when people have their bone marrow expand, it gets really crowded in there, what they can feel is that expansion and it can start to hurt and ache. And unfortunately, that's more common than we wish. But the risks of not giving the growth factor are that you're at risk for bacterial infections or even not being ready for your next chemotherapy cycle. Can you see this dance that we're doing? If you're one of those people whose bone marrow expands to the point where you get bone pain, and let me tell you which areas of your body might get affected, the areas that have the bone marrow. Remember I said the long bones, like the thighs? The pelvis has a lot of bone marrow. There's some in the, in the long bones of the arm. The ribs seem particularly vulnerable to this kind of pain. If you've had this, feel free to drop a note in the chat and tell us where your pain was. Now, one of the things that's really important is for you to make note of how severe it was and then to talk with your medical team. You can actually get medicine to help with that between cycles before your next chemotherapy dose is given, or we can also make changes to how often you get it. So if you're getting it just once after each cycle, we can go down on the dose. If you're somebody whose insurance requires that you get it every day for five days after chemotherapy, we can go every other day. The key thing is we can't make those changes if you don't tell us. And there's a lot of pressure on patients not to complain. So I view it as reporting. You're reporting your symptoms so that we can take the best care of you. It's also a lot of pressure to be a so-called good patient a good patient reports their symptoms, right? Because we're a team. So in summary, growth factor is given to keep you on schedule with your chemo, to keep you at lower risk for getting bacterial infections. It's given under the skin, either through a needle in the abdomen or sometimes the thigh, or an auto body injector. Ask your oncologist if your insurance might cover that because it's pretty convenient. Um, and We've also talked about the side effects you might experience with growth factor. I do want to make a point. If you come in and your blood counts are just good enough to get chemo, reducing the dose isn't something we can do. But if your white cell counts are really high and it looks like maybe you had what we call an exuberant bone marrow response to the growth factor shot, we can definitely make some changes to make this more tolerable for you. I've covered a lot in this video. If it's been helpful, please click like and also subscribe. Drop us a comment if you want to. All of this helps other people and their families find this information and get answers to the questions, people just like you.